I'm going to tell you a story today, okay? because here's the reason why. The worst possible thing you can do with this topic <clears throat> um, is treat it as sort of a random arbitrary set of rules that you've got to learn and then mechanically apply to a set of um, also arbitrary and random letters and numbers that you just have to learn. Okay? Um, yeah, yeah. So, I, I really am desperate for you to not approach this topic like this because we're going to spend the better part of the next two years um, learning it and applying it. In fact, um, you guys probably aren't aware of this that much, but you know, two unit maths, right? It's not the lowest level of maths. There are levels below it. There's like general maths and there's other courses before called maths and society and that kind of thing. The big difference between two unit, three unit, four unit and those courses is this. Okay, in fact, two unit, Three unit and four unit um, in like border studies and that kind of thing. Oh, I'm just talking about. Sorry. Um, <laughs> they are called the calculus courses. Okay, and you can actually get your program up, have a look at the syllabus, and out of say about thirty topics, about two thirds of them have to do with this. Okay, so that's how much calculus is, is going to be in your face. So I want to motivate you in a way which um, sort of gets you appreciating the wonder of what you're doing. Because okay. calculus is not a set of random rules that are invented by mathematicians to torture you. Okay? I just gave them back. I used to think that. Okay? And then when I went to university, I actually learned a bit about what calculus is about. Um, calculus is not a random set of rules that were invented to torture you. Actually, they were um, a set of insights um, put together by, well, depending on which history book you read, one or more geniuses to solve one of the most um, insoluble problems in the universe, okay? Really, really um, linear of life type stuff, okay? And you guys, by doing this topic, you can think the thoughts of those um, brightest minds of the universe after them, okay? So when you're doing all the differentiation and stuff, and you're like, oh, I have this page of exercise thing. Um, please don't get that it's just, it's just I have to do this because some guy in the Water Studies decided that's what year 11 students have to learn. Um, we're late because it's really cool. Okay? So, where does the story start? Or who does the story start with? Maybe you can tell me. Yeah. Starts with a guy named Isaac Newton. Okay. Now, what is his birthday? Um, <laughs> when is his birthday? Fourth of January. Oh, cool day. Okay. Yeah. Isaac Newton, smart guy. He's a smart guy. Um, he's famous for a lot of different things. What he's most famous for, though, is that he had a puzzle. Whether or not you think it actually fell on his head or not is disagreeable um, <laughs> by some people. But everyone basically agrees that. He looked at an apple, and he saw it fall, okay. and he said, the apple's in the sky, well, in a tree, and then it falls. The moon is in the sky, it's above the earth. Why doesn't it fall? Why doesn't it eventually, one day, crash down to the earth, just like every other falling object? Okay. Falling sideways. Uh, not quite. It does not quite. fall. Yeah. Falling like downwards, but it misses. Ah, but this is where this people... Now, here's the thing, here's the thing. Oh, genius. <laughs> What he thought to himself was... <laughs> what he thought to himself was, it must actually be falling, right? Just like the apple. But it must be doing something else which stops it from actually hitting the earth. So he wanted to think about this, and he realized it had to do with, um, they knew about gravity and how it works, because it made everything fall, right? But what he knew is that, if you think about the force of gravity, and how much gravity is being exerted on something, um, it changes <laughs> as you go. Story time. It changes <laughs> as you come in. It's like, what? Right. You ever see? The amount of gravity on something like, say, an apple like or the moon, <laughs> uh, it changes as you get further away. Okay. So gravity is strongest when you're, you're zero distance from something, when you're actually standing on the surface of the Earth. Okay, that's when it's grabbing onto you the most. If you go away um, from the Earth, that, that gravitational force starts to decrease. Okay? And if you're, say, two times further away from the Earth, uh, the gravity will halve. And if, it, if you're four times away, you will be um, 16 times weaker. And it, it sort of tapers off like this. Now here was his problem. He wanted to think about this, and particularly, yes, how um, this thing relates to an object moving, because the moon isn't just falling, it's doing other things as well. But he couldn't do any maths with it, 
And he, he was his problem. Okay? He wanted to know how um, this gravity thing changes over, over distance. Okay? But he had no way to express or calculate what that change was because um, we know how to talk about change when things are straight. Because okay? like in year 8 in quantum geometry, we learn about the change and we call it gradient. Right? Um, so we say, uh, if you've got two points on a straight line, okay, if you can work out how far it goes up, which we call rise, and how far you go across, which we call run, if you divide one by the other, then you'll get uh, the gradient or the slant or the how much this line is changing um, of this line. Okay? And it's the same everywhere, so you can take any two points you like. But the problem with this guy is that if you take different points, like say this one and this one, okay, or if you took this one and this one, or any two different points, um, this gradient business would change. It would always be different. The gradient wasn't a number. right? Uh, in this case, the gradient was just a, um, a constant term. Okay? Here, the gradient itself was always changing. The gradient itself was a function. You guys remember when we looked at functions and relations? Right? It's something which you put inputs in, like say the distance where you are, and it'll change. Right? So the gradient, that, that we call it the gradient function, right? as opposed to just the number. Okay? So 